One of the first things I learned when starting out in 3D printing was that different materials required widely varying temperatures in order to be extruded. Back then there was really only PLA and ABS, but now depending on materials, the range can be from under 200 to well north of 300 Celsius. Over the past few months, we've looked at calibrating pressure advance, adjusting flow for your material, and today we're going to be diving into tuning temperature. Similar to the previous ones, we'll be using the calibration tools in Orca Slicer, but some other slicers have similar tools or add-ons that can also be used. As much as I'd love to say that temps is the easier one, there's a handful of things that you'll need to consider. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before setting up a temperature tower in Orca Slicer, let's quickly touch on why setting up your temperature correctly is so important. Printing it too low of a temperature runs the risk of under extrusion and poor interlayer adhesion. The under extrusion comes from the extruder not being able to push material through the hot end quick enough due to increased pressure from the lower melt temp. For layer strength, if your filament is extruded at too low of a temp, it will not form the necessary bond with the previous layer. On the flip side, although printing slightly warmer can increase part strength, printing too hot comes with its own set of complications. Some of these are additional stringing, along with increased sagging on bridges and overhangs. At a certain point, the elevated temperatures can actually break down the filament, causing less strength and an increase in VOCs. Common in the world of CNC, and not quite so much in 3D printing, is the material POM. It has some fantastic properties, but when printed at elevated temperatures, it can release formaldehyde gas. This is an extreme example, but it does hammer home the importance of setting your temperature correctly. Temps can also impact the sheen of a print. As an example, I took the same PLA filament and printed a Benchy at 195 Celsius and again at 230 Celsius. Side by side, the one printed at a higher temp is much shinier, while the lower temp has more of a matte finish. This will be the case with most filaments, with some being more distinct than others. For today's video, I'll be using Soraya Tech's new glass-filled ABS. They sent over a couple rolls that I'll be using for an upcoming Positron Journeymaker build, so I'm going through the process of dialing in a profile. For the printer, I'm using the recently released GD Tech Q1 Pro. I've done a fair bit of regular ABS printing on it already, and the most recent Orca Slicer 2.0 release candidate comes with a profile built in. Jumping into Orca Slicer, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a rough profile for our filament. There was quite a few filaments built in, and they actually had a glass-filled ABS profile that I went with. If you can't find a comparable one, grab any profile and just make sure that the bed temp is set in the range you'll need, that the volumetric flow is in a reasonable range, and that cooling is set correctly. Since you're going to be running a temperature test, the print temps set here don't matter yet. With that out of the way, head up to the calibration drop-down menu and select temperature. This opens up a window where we'll set the range of temperatures we want to test. This window has a handful of common materials with ranges that will be plenty for most, but there's also a custom option if you want to create a range that's not already listed. Soriatech has a range of 230 to 250 Celsius on the spool, and the set ABS ASA range is 230 to 270 Celsius, so I went with that. Clicking OK generates your temperature tower from max to minimum temp in increments of 5 Celsius. I really like that the temps are written on each segment of the tower, which makes quickly referencing it at a later date much easier than trying to guess what you would set the range to. If you slice the plate and change the color scheme to temperature, you can see a more vivid representation of your range. This whole process used to be manual, so having a built-in utility that quickly generates these tests is awesome. All that's left is to print out the tower. Print time will vary greatly depending on how big of a range you're testing along with your printer settings. In my case, it was right around an hour. Once your print completes, it's time to figure out which temp looks best. The towers have a few things on them to help in determining this. First is the overhang test on the left side. This is a fairly steep overhang and can often show you when temps are too warm due to drooping or too cold because the layers won't be stuck to each other very well. Next is the bridging test. At the very top of each section is a decent sized bridge. Similar to the overhang test, you're looking for the cleanest bridge. 
To the right of that, inside of the oval shape, is a small peak. With this, I first look at the overall quality of the peak. On certain sections, it might be more defined, while others look like a total mess. In addition, you want to check here for stringing. Stringing can be caused by multiple things, but temperatures play a huge role in it. The warmer you print, the more likely you are to create additional strings. Then, on the far right, we have another overhang test that's a little less extreme and is more rounded. Funny enough, using the temp tower, I found it really difficult to determine which temperature looked best for the Soriatech glass-filled ABS. I believe a big part of it is that the added fibers help to mask some of the imperfections. I ended up deciding on 245 Celsius based on some really subtle differences, but I also printed out a few other towers to show what the ranges can look like. With some materials, the correct choice will be much more obvious. Once you've decided on the optimal temperature, make sure to go back into your material profile, update the print temp, and save it. I also want to point out that this test is not foolproof. Ideally, you'd hook up prints of each filament temp range to a tensile strength tester, but this is not realistic, and in most cases, a simple temp tower is sufficient. You'll have to decide what you think looks best for each filament, and you still might have to adjust this depending on what sort of speeds you end up trying to push, or if you make adjustments to things like cooling that differ from when you initially ran that test. If nothing else, the temp tower is a great way to narrow down the range you should be using in order to get the best looking prints with a specific filament. And that has been the temperature tower test using Orca Slicer. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you're now up and running with your own temp tests. Let me know in the comments down below if you're already running temp towers or if you have some other print or metric that you use in order to determine the best temperature for your filament. The next calibration test that we're going to be covering will be the retraction test. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.